Hello everyone and warm greetings to all of you. So today we are going to read a short story called The Little Girl. It was written by Catherine Manfield and uh, it is believed that the little girl in this story is the author herself. Now without wasting any further time let us get into the less uh, into the story here. So before you read there is a question here which means do you feel you know your parents better now than when you were much younger perhaps you now understand the reasons for some of their actions that used to upset you earlier so this might have happened to you because as a young child your parents will always try to guide you they will always say don't do that and don't do this don't do that all the time and Back then you must have felt like, okay, my parents are always forcing me. They are not allowing me to do anything freely. But now that when you are a little grown up, you might have uh, come up with this uh, understanding that your parents were actually doing those things for you. Right? Now, this story, The Little Girl, is about a little girl whose feeling for her father changed from fear to understanding will probably find an echo in every home. So the story is about a little girl, as the title suggests. And in this story, we will find out that the girl who at first feel fear for her father at, and uh, will s slowly and gradually change to understanding by the end of the story. So let's read it now. And I will only explain Andy. Uh, or say the complex part to the little girl he was a figure to be feared and avoided every morning before going to work he came into her room and gave her a casual kiss to which she responded with good my father and oh there was a glad sense of relief when she heard the noise of the carriage growing fainter and fainter down the long road so to the little girl, the father was a person to be feared. So she feared her father. She was afraid of her father and she wanted to avoid him. And every morning when he leave for his work in his carriage, which means car, she sends a, re uh, she sends a relief and she feels glad and happy at the same time. Okay, yeah, moving on. In the evening when he came home, she stood near the staircase and heard his loud voice in the hall. Bring my tea into the drawing room. Hasn't the paper come yet? Mother, go and see if my paper is out there and bring me my slippers. So when he come back, the father from his work, he ordered things. And where would she be? She would be in her room listening to the loud voice in the down, hall down there. Kezia! Mother would call to her, If you are a good girl, you can come down and take off father's boot. Slowly, the girl would slip down the stairs, more slowly, still across the hall, and push open the drawing room door. So her mother would then call Kezia to come down and remove, take off means remove her father's boot, because her father is tired and he's, he might be resting there. So she will slip down, means she would come down from the stair quite unwillingly right because she doesn't want to come she is afraid of her father by that time he had his spectacles on and looked at her over them in a way in a way that was terrifying to the little girl so the way he looked at her was very uh, un uh, what's it, unwanting she doesn't want to be looked in that way it was terrifying it makes her feel afraid and scared well, Kezia, hurry up and pull off these boots and take them outside. Have you been a girl, good girl today? I d d don't know, father. You d d don't know? If you stutter like that, mother will have to take you to the doctor. So when she reached in the drawing hall, the fa uh, her father asked her if she had been a good girl, right? And to which she answered in a stammering way. She said she did, did, don't know. Okay. And, and when she said that, the father replied her in a very negative way. 
So the thing that happens here is called stutter. She never stuttered with other people, had quite given it up, but only with father, because then she was trying so hard to say words properly. Now, does she stutter with other people? No, she had given it up, means she had stopped doing it in front of other people. But to her father, she does stutter as she wants to uh, choose the word and pronounce it properly. What's the matter? What are you looking so wretched about? Mother, I wish you taught this child not to appear on the brink of suicide. Here, Kezia, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. So then, because she was staring at uh, him, he would uh, call her that, Why were you looking so unhappy? Wretched means unhappy here. And then he would also say, talk, uh, give advice to her mother that she should be taught how to uh, show her face properly. He was so big, his hands and his neck, especially his mouth when he yawned. Thinking about him alone was like thinking of a giant. So this is thought of the author. So when she was uh, given the teacup, she felt that the father is huge, right? especially when he yawned and she compared it with the with a giant so giant is a very or say a weirdly strangely large uh, creature on sunday afternoons grandmother sent her down to the drawing room to have a nice little talk with father and mother but the little girl always found mother reading and father stretched out on the sofa his handkerchief on his face his feet on one of the best cushions, sleeping soundly and snoring. So on a Sunday afternoon, the grandmother sent her, okay, on normally sent her down the hall to have a talk, to have a conversation with her uh, parents. But then her mother would be found reading as in the picture clearly shown and the father stretching out on the sofa and resting there. And he was sleeping soundly. Soundly means very well in the good manner and snoring okay yeah so you can clearly see it in the picture here she sat on a stool gravely watched him until he woke and stretched and asked the time then looked at her don't stare so Kezia you look like a little brown owl one day when she was kept indoor with a cold her grandmother told her that father's birthday was next week and suggested she should make him a pin cushion for a gift out of a beautiful piece of yellow silk so then her father's birthday arrived and grandmother suggested her when she was kept inside her room indoor uh, because she was ill with the cold and that she should uh, or say make uh, create a pin cushion so a cushion is a pillow here yeah, kind of pillow and present it to her father on his birthday laboriously with a double cotton the little girl stitched three sides so she stitched three sides of the cushion but what to fill it with that was the question the grandmother was out in the garden and she wandered into mother's bedroom to look for scraps scraps means unusable uh, things right a small pieces of cloth and paper on the bed she discovered a great many sheets of fine paper gathered them up and tore them into tiny pieces and stuffed her case then saw up the fourth side so when she was uh, fine searching for scraps unusable and unwanted cloth and paper she found that in her mother's bedroom on the bed table there were some sheets some paper which were nice and then she collected all she teared them down into tiny pieces and then she stuffed the cushion with it and finally she saw the fourth side of the cushion that night there was a hue and a cry in the house so a hue and cry mean angry protest so people were shouting here and there that night especially her father father's great speech for the pot authority had been lost why were they shouting because the speech which father had created for the pot, pot authority was lost rooms were searched 
servants were asked questions. Finally, mother came into Kezia's room. Kezia, I suppose you didn't see some papers on the table in your room, in our room. Oh, yes, she said. I tore them up for my surprise. What? screamed mother. Come straight down to the dining room this instant. So as you can see that just like an innocent child, she, because she was a child, Kezia innocently replied that, yeah, she did the thing. She actually found the papers from their room. In uh, from their room, and she tore all them up for a surprise, which was for her father's birthday. But mother screamed at her and called her down in the dining room at that moment. That's instant means that time now. Instant means now, and she was dragged down to where father was pacing to and fro, hands behind his back. So when she was I would say pulled down the uh, into the dining room, her father was pacing means walking. Here and there, to and fro, hands were behind his back. Well, he said sharply. Mother explained. He stopped and stared at the child. Did you do that? No, 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 she whispered. Mother, go up to her room and fetch down the damn thing. See that the child's put to bed this instant. So the father, did he talk nicely? No, he was angry. So he uh, asked his mother to go up. Put this child into the bed and then fetch down means to uh, take down the little damn thing the pin cushion which was made for him crying too much to explain she lay in the shadowed room watching the evening light make a sad little pattern on the floor so she was there trying to explain as she cried then father came into the room with a ruler in his hand so a ruler a scale I'm going to beat you for this, he said. Oh, no, no, she screamed, hiding under the bedclothes. He pulled them aside. Sit up, he ordered, and hold out your hands. You must be taught once and for all not to touch what does not belong to you. But it was for your b birthday. Down came the ruler on her little pink palms. So as you can see that she hit herself under the bed clothes but the father pulled her out and then punished her with that ruler although she said that it was for her birthday for his birthday but he didn't care about it that at that time hours later when grandmother had wrapped her in a shawl and rocked her in the rocking chair the child clung to her soft body so off hours later means uh, a few hour later when grandmother had covered her all in the shawl and rocked her means rock means moved okay moving here and there as we do to a little baby rocking chair moving chair she was um, in her uh, arms what did god make fathers for she sobbed so she cried and she asked this very rhetorical question that why were fathers made why did god make them Here's the clean hanky, darling. Blow your nose. Go to sleep, pet. You will forget all about it in the morning. I tried to explain to father, but he was too upset to listen tonight. Then the grandmother consoled her, calmed her down, saying that the father will explain. Uh, what's it? Uh, not ex the father will understand the real situation and uh, she will try to explain him on any other day because today he's not listening he's quite upset but the child never forgot next time she saw him she quickly put both hands behind her back and a red color flew into her cheeks the mcdonald's lived next door they had five children so now we're going to read about mcdonald's Looking through a gap in the fence, the little girl saw them playing tack in the evening. The father with the baby Mao on his shoulder, two little girls hanging on to his coat pockets, ran round and round the flower beds, shaking with laughter. Once she saw the boys turn the hose on him and he tried to catch them laughing all the time. So now Mr. MacDonald uh, McDonald was um, their neighbor and they used to lift in the next very next door as neighbors do 
and she used to look through a gap in from the fence as you can see it in this picture here so what is she doing she is looking from a gap which is there in, on the fence this is called as fence i guess you know it and she's looking at mr mcdonald he has five children and they all are playing with him a game called tag a tag is a game where one try to catch another person okay so this much is written here then she, it was she decided there were different sorts of father so now she knew that father is not just one of a kind there were different kind of fathers some always laugh and play with their children and some are like her father who were who didn't who doesn't laugh who is strict suddenly one day mother became ill and she and grandmother went to hospital the little girl was left alone in the house with alice the cook that was all right in the daytime but while alice was putting her to bed she grew suddenly afraid so one day her mother became sick and she was she, and grandmother went with her mother so she was alone there in the room and when alice the cook put her bed into uh, put her into the bed at night she grew afraid what will i do i have a night if i have a nightmare she asked i often have nightmares and then granny takes me into her bed i can't stay in the dark it all gets whispery you just go to sleep child said alice pulling off her socks and don't you scream and wake your poor pa so normally the uh, kasia is afraid of having nightmare nightmare means a bad dream and whenever she had nightmares granny grandma would take her into her bed and then they will sleep together otherwise she can't sleep alone in dark so that's what happened here but the same old nightmare came the butcher with a knife and a rope who came nearer and nearer smiling that dreadful smile while she could not move could only stand still crying out grandma grandma she woke shivering to see father beside her bed a candle in his hand so what was so she used to have an old nightmare over and over again the bad dream which was of a butcher a butcher is a person who kills animal and sells sell their meat with a knife and a rope the butcher came with a knife and he, she uh, it, uh, the butcher was approaching her with her with his frightening and fearful smile dreadful smile and when she woke shivering shivering means shaking her body as she woke up she saw her father next to her bed and a candle in his hand because it was dark there what's the matter he said oh the butcher a uh, a butcher a knife i want granny he blew out the candle bent down and caught up the child in his arms carrying her along the passage to the big bedroom so she so he then took her into his bedroom where he was alone as well a newspaper was on the bed a half smoked cigar was near his reading lamp he put away the paper threw the cigar into the fireplace then carefully tucked up the child tucked up means she he carefully covered the little girl inside the bed tuck he lay down beside her half asleep still still with the butcher's smile all about her it seemed she crept close to him snuggled her head under his arm held tightly to his shirt so then the father also uh was lay himself means lie down himself next to his daughter and then try to sleep there and she because was afraid she snuggled means she moved into a very comfortable position with another person which was his father and hold his shirt very tightly then the dark did not matter she lay still here rub your feet against my legs and get them warm said father so the father uh concern to her was is shown in this particular line the father offered his warm legs to uh to his father to his daughter tired out he slept before the little girl 
A funny feeling came over her. Poor father, not so big after all, and with no one to look after him. He was harder than grandmother, but it was a nice hardness. So now she started to understand that in reality her father is not that was it big and like a giant right his father is also a simple human being who needs uh, love and care and affection and then although his father is hard but not in a bad way in a nice way he was strict and every day he had to work and was too tired to be mr macdonald so he cannot be mr macdonald the uh, their neighbor who loves and play all the time because he worked every day very hard and then he would be very tired and she had torn up all the but all his beautiful writing and also she was punished only because she had messed up with his beautiful and important writing which was the speech she stood suddenly and sighed so she stood means she suddenly shook herself and sighed took a long breath what's the matter asked her father another dream oh said the little girl my head's on your heart i can hear it going what a big heart you have got father dear so at last we can clearly see that now the little girl is very comfortable with his with her father and she believes that her father had a uh, has a big heart which he normally doesn't show to um, her because she has his uh, because he has his own work and uh, he had to you see uh, do many stuff to teach um, his child how to behave so that was um, the overall short story written by Catherine Mansfield and as i said many people believe that the little girl in this story is Catherine Mansfield herself